Why you should not be concerned about a Bitcoin ban? Are you concerned about a ban? Then you require more Bitcoin than you think. Skeptics frequently worry that governments will prohibit Bitcoin if it grows too popular and threatens national sovereignty. At the very least, these detractors recognize Bitcoin's significance and the power that state currency monopolies wield over us. What they don't realize is the potential of networked open source technologies, as well as the game theory that governments face when making these judgments. TLDR, bans are futile, they simply lose global technical advantage to competitors. Authoritarian administrations are more likely to enact regressive legislation. If you live under such a government, you need Bitcoin more than you realize. You cannot ban Bitcoin, you can only ban Bitcoin from yourself. The most significant aspect of distributed open source systems, such as Bitcoin, is self-regulation. The Bitcoin supply is hard-coded with a hard limit of 21 million units, blocks are mined every 10 minutes on average, miners are rewarded with new Bitcoin, supply growth is halved every 4 years, anyone can view and validate transactions by running a node, and no one can be censored from the network if they have internet access and follow the consensus rules. These principles are unaffected by what you, I, or the regulators think. A government can try to prevent its citizens from accessing the network, but Bitcoin will continue to operate on the internet. Hester Peirce of the Securities and Exchange Commission recently stated that governments would be irresponsible to outlaw Bitcoin. Bans are ineffective and may be impossible. Even if a government outright prohibited Bitcoin, it would be ineffective. During Prohibition, the United States government prohibited the sale of alcoholic beverages, yet liquor was commonly available. Because Bitcoin isn't really a physical entity, how can governments plan to seize it? It is quite difficult to prohibit people from utilizing code on the internet. China sought to ban Facebook, but Chinese people still use VPNs to access the site. There are also doubts regarding the legitimacy of any hypothetical Bitcoin prohibition in the United States, because Bitcoin is essentially code, which could be a protected category of free expression under the First Amendment. The stakes are rising as a result of global regulatory competition. A Bitcoin prohibition would be foolish and futile, but governments could surely increase entry obstacles and friction. Regulators can impose know your customer and anti-money laundering regulations, or they can hike taxes, which will most certainly delay uptake. However, it is impossible to imagine governments enacting significantly tougher rules on Bitcoin in comparison to other financial assets. Although governments have historically overstepped their bounds with, there is little precedence, and even less incentive, to do so with Bitcoin. Furthermore, would they be willing to accept the repercussions if they did? Do the world's great nations wish to reject this potent technology while others embrace it? In a recent interview, Republican policymaker Kevin McCarthy discussed this geopolitical trade-off. Policymakers in the United States are concerned about the potential of relinquishing the initiative to China. This form of regulatory rivalry has compelled Miami Mayor Francis Suarez to embrace Bitcoin as a means of attracting tech-savvy capital to his city. Is it possible that positive Bitcoin regulation is just as likely as negative Bitcoin regulation? In a multipolar world, Coordination is impossible. A ban would be more effective if all countries coordinated and implemented it at the same time. However, given the turbulent world of geopolitics, what are the chances of global coordination? The UK is too preoccupied with arguing with the EU, and the US is too preoccupied with arguing with China, 
for them all to crack down on Bitcoin at the same time. Marco Popic's multipolar worldview, as stated in his latest book Geopolitical Alpha, reinforced my belief that the geopolitical conditions required for a worldwide coordinated crackdown on Bitcoin do not exist. Regulators are warming up to the technology. Moving from macro to micro considerations, are governments willing to kill Bitcoin businesses within their own borders? When we consider the positions at Coinbase, Gemini, and other companies, we can see that Bitcoin is getting entrenched, especially in the world's largest economy. Most countries have exchanges, corporations have Bitcoin on their balance sheets, the Chicago Mercantile Exchange sells Bitcoin futures, and members of the United States Congress are outright proponents of BTC. Ex-US regulators have just joined Binance and BlockFi, highlighting a growing link between Bitcoin-related enterprises and the government. There is a good chance that many politicians own Bitcoin. I believe Bitcoin holders have a more powerful, organized, and outspoken lobbying group than their opponents. Millennials may require financial power. Most countries are taking a wait-and-see strategy since they are unsure how to tackle Bitcoin technology. They are optimistic that innovation, jobs, and economic growth will emerge, and they claim that the industry is too small to pose a serious danger. However, the longer they delay, the more established the industry grows, and unfavorable regulation becomes less likely. This factor becomes more significant when one considers the ascension of millennials to economic and political prominence. According to the Fall 2020 Blockchain Capital Poll, 55% of millennials will likely purchase Bitcoin in the next five years, compared to only 19% of the 55 to 64 age group. Millennials are three times more likely than their parents to own cryptocurrencies because they are more familiar with new technology, are more comfortable with intangible assets, and likely see the asset as a potential to construct a more secure financial future. This generation is getting closer to the seat of political power with each passing year. At the very least, they are taken into account by vote-hungry politicians. Maybe you need Bitcoin more than you believe? Yes, it is ineffective, yes, it is doubtful, but, a Bitcoin prohibition is still a possibility. Governments that prohibit new technologies, on the other hand, tend to take on a specific personality. Such governments, such as those in China and Venezuela, tend to be more autocratic and less supportive of individual liberty. People in these countries require Bitcoin the most. Venezuelans don't care what the government says, they need Bitcoin to avoid hyperinflation. Afghans and Belarusians require access to digital bank accounts in order to be free of their tyrannical governments. Turkey and Nigeria are two recent examples of countries where Bitcoin has become a need. In the same month, Erdogan's Turkish government took plans to prohibit retailers from accepting Bitcoin, and Nigeria tightened its grip on exchanges. As a result, interest in Bitcoin has skyrocketed in both countries. Turkey and Nigeria were already Bitcoin hotspots because citizens in such nations are aware that their governments do not preserve currency value, the US dollar has gained 450% and 170% against the Turkish lira and Nigerian naira, respectively, since 2010. It's telling that the government's attempts to control Bitcoin haven't diminished interest in it. The moral of the story is that if you believe your government will outlaw Bitcoin, you will need it more than you think. The Bitcoin ecosystem may pose a challenge to governments at some point. It is natural that the prospect of impending regulation is a deterrent to potential investors. However, 
When we examine the various possibilities, we see that the governments and your most effective answers to Bitcoin are the same, embrace it. In this scenario, governments can at least try to extract as much tax income as possible from the booming sector. Bans are pointless unless nations can re-establish global coordination. Only the most backwards regimes will ban their population from dealing with this powerful technology, and individuals in those nations have the greatest need for Bitcoin. Each individual must pick where they fall on this spectrum, but do not delay in making your decision. The stakes are too high, and the opportunity too tremendous, to let the regulatory threat derail activity entirely. We hope you enjoyed watching and listening to this video, please let us know your opinion in the comments area below. If you found our content useful, please like it and share it with your friends. Also don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell for more crypto-related contents.